What is up guys, Tony here, and today we're doing another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about lens flares. So you guys all know and love them. They're those awesome little, you know, glares from the sun that a lot of people use in their hardcore edits. Some people use it in dubstep and chill edits, but mostly hardcore edits. Uh, it is very difficult to do lens flares in Final Cut because, to be honest, there are no lens flares in Final Cut Pro. The only lens flare you can find in Final Cut Pro is, let me go ahead and get some sort of clip in here. Let's just throw this one in here. Why not? The only lens flare you can get in Final Cut Pro out of the gates, out of the box, is actually in the text effects. You go to lens flare, and I used to do this. Trust, trust me, I, I used to do it. And it does that. Now, you can see the title. What I would do is I'd just get rid of the title. And, you know, I'm kind of going back old school here, but, you know, I'd like throw it up in the corner. Whoops. Let me select the actual thing. And for some reason, it's glitching. It's not letting me select the text to move. It's making me move the whole thing. But regardless, you get the point. It basically would allow you to have a lens flare on screen, which kind of sucked. I I'm going to be honest. That's not what this video is about. One second, let me get back. Okay. That is not what this video is about. We are talking about a F FCP effect called Poor Man's Lens Flare. You can buy this on fcpeffects.com or you can get it illegitimately. That's up to you. I personally paid for it, but it's up to you. Uh, so what you do is you go ahead and you bring it into the timeline. So let's find a spot that a lens flare would fit into, like right here. This is perfect. Right as you come around this helicopter. So basically like right here, if I wanted to put a lens flare right up here. It's really simple. It's really simple. Um, so basically you just drag it on from the text pane. It's kind of weird that it's text, but it makes it easier to move around. And you can go ahead and put it right there. Now, uh, in the options, you have the ability to make it warmer, which means you get this more, you know, RNG effect, or cooler. So you have a blue effect. Sometimes you want a blue lens flare. I personally like the warmer ones, in a situation like this especially. Uh, you can change the size, which I tend to do a lot because it seems very slim right now. And you can see it really, you can actually see a bit of like almost like a reflection on the sniper, which is really nice. Uh, the intensity can be increased also, which furthermore gives that reflection-ish -ish feel. And it's really starting to look like almost like Far Cry or something. It really looks nice on PC, of course. Anyway, uh, so you can do some streaks, which you have a various option. You can do a lot or a little. I usually do a little because it looks more realistic, like right there. Uh, you can do the fall off, which obviously constrains it to the circle, or it increases it a lot. Uh, on this one, I'd probably say mid range is good. Uh, the glow fall off is a similar thing. It's just the you know aura of the orange orange effect. Orange, yeah, I'm from New York. Uh, and ring radius is obviously the ring that the flare produces, which for some reason is not. Sh oh, there it is. It's right there. See it? See it? Flares do that, so you can, of course, increase that. You can also increase the width of it. Now, I think increasing the width all the way makes it look very realistic. Um, you can also do flicker. Now, flicker is some cool shit. Now, let me warn you that this is not going to stay in that same place. So it's going to be kind of looking cheesy in certain parts, like right here. kind of looks cheesy. So we're going to go ahead and just put the flicker on anyway so we can show you what it does. Flicker, I usually put up to the second bar here. And you can see... Is it doing it? It's not really doing it that much. Let's put it up a little bit more so you can see it well. You can see it kind of flickers. It gets darker, dimmer, and lighter. Dimmer and lighter. It's kind of hard to see, but it does it. And the point of that is just to add a more realistic sun effect. You've seen it in montages before. Uh, you can also... Let me turn down the flicker. You can also adjust the flicker's frequency, make it faster, make it noisier. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the halo opacity is just making the aura around it thicker and hard to see through, or thinner and more opaque, obviously. And you can also add a blur to it, which, you know, is optional. Uh, you can also change the color of the aura, so you can make it green. Now, the intensity on this is not that strong, so it's very difficult to see. And you can also have overlap. I mean, it just goes on striation strength. Stuff that's very minor, you're not going to really notice it that much unless you're really, really into uh, photogenic editing, which basically means making things look very real, which is the point of this. 
is to make it look really real. But if you're just a, you know, con editor, it probably doesn't matter as much to you. Um, now, I'm going to talk about uh, making this look very realistic because I'm, I'm obviously a tutorial guy. So we're going to go ahead and show you right here what I would do to make this look a little bit more realistic. So as he comes around the corner, I'd probably start it like right here. And I'd also make this a storyline. Wait, storyline? Yes, a storyline. That's right. And I would, whoops, I would put a cross dissolve. So it kind of, well, that's a little early. Or a little late. Maybe like right. I'd have to finick around with it a bit more. And I'm sure you guys will do the same. But basically add a cross dissolve. So it kind of fades in like right there. I'd also make that a little bit slimmer. I'm not going to mess around with it too much. And also what I would do is I'd get in here, I'd select it, and use my arrow keys. By the way, it's going to look weird because I'm not previewing it like that. Actually, it's kind of messing up a lot. That happens with Cross Dissolve. It's actually something that goes away in post. What that means is when you render it out, it won't be there anymore. It's a, it's a rendering thing. So I'm actually going to delete it. Sorry, uh, I can't really show you guys what I'm doing here as much. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually select the clip and use my arrow keys to move frame by frame, right? So I'd start here, and I go over here to center, and I hit plus. That basically gives me a keyframe. Um, then I move forward once with my arrow, and the keyframe will automatically start when I move it. I would move it back to that position it was at, and I'd keep doing that every frame. Now here it gets a little tricky, and I'll tell you why. There's a map there, and you don't want it to be on top of the map because it starts to look like orange juice. Anyway, so you just keep it there. And then as you move, you are going to want to like find a way to do this. I guess it's fine to have it over the map. And then you really want to make it move over. And then you want to make it move like out of frame, like back here. And then like right here, you'd start cutting it off. Probably cross dissolve again. But like I said, it's not going to look good because it's not rendered out properly but basically you get the point it kind of moves with motion just like in real life uh, you can do the same thing at many other points in the video you can kind of like right here you can add a sun here and you could just kind of make it move around this is basically motion tracking for dummies on uh, Final Cut Pro unfortunately there is no motion tracking tool or plugins so it's a little bit more monotonous but regardless if you want to do it on Final Cut Pro it is possible it just takes the dedication uh, anyway that's pretty much it that's how you do lens flares on Final Cut Pro there are other lens flare uh, plugins out there but this is the best one that I've used myself if you found one that's better uh, go ahead and suggest it in the uh, comments uh, but if you guys have any other tutorials you guys want me to do of course you always can comment that also and if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And I'll be doing many more of these videos in the future. That's pretty much it. I am Tony, and I'll see you guys next time.